I am the Ascended Master, Mother Mary, and I am grateful to be able to tell you why I consider that these conferences this year are very important. Obviously, I will focus on the situation in Europe, where if you look at the events that have happened over the last year or so, there have been some events like Brexit, the terrorist attacks, the immigration situation, and even others where nations have become more nationalistic that have actually created a certain fear among the population of where Europe might be headed, even whether the European Union has a future or will end up breaking up into smaller pieces. And so, it is not so <clears throat> that the European Union is absolutely necessary for the manifestation of the Golden Age in Europe. As St. Germain has hinted at before, there can be various scenarios. <clears throat> there could be other ways for the nations to cooperate. There could be nations that might merge. There could be regions that would cooperate. But nevertheless, it would be easier, more likely, to have the European Union transition into a more golden age structure than it would be if the European Union fell apart and you would have to create something new. <coughs> and that is why we certainly would prefer that the European Union would stay intact and would gradually, of course, transition closer and closer to the vision that St. Germain holds. And so, what actually happened over this last year is that the dark forces who are trying to prevent the Golden Age from manifesting partly precipitated and partly used some of these events to take advantage of this fear. And my beloved, when we call you to a conference and when we have you give, for example, an invocation, there is much more going on than what meets the eye, the same when we release our dictations. Now, you might think about the uh, philosopher Plato, who said that there is a realm beyond the material where there exists ideal geometric form. This has caused some people to speculate that these must be the pure geometric forms you know, such as circles and squares and triangles and lines. But this is actually a very simplified way of thinking. The reality is that everything has a certain geometry. Everything, every form is based on a certain geometry. And so, as you can see that there are certain geometric patterns that are repeated in nature, if you could see the three higher realms, you would see that in each realm there are certain geometric patterns. And that means that for any situation you have here in the physical octave, you could see that there is a complex geometric pattern in the emotional, mental, and identity realms. And it is the interaction of these geometric patterns in the three higher realms that often have a decisive influence on what happens in the physical. If you have a physical situation, like for example, this situation with the challenges and people's fear about the future of the EU, then you could say that there is a physical possibility that this could go in one direction and the tendency could become worse and you could start a downward spiral, spiral that could lead to the breakup of the EU. Or it could be, this could be avoided and you could start a more positive upward movement that hopefully would prevent the collapse of the European Union but would lead to a more golden age structure. And so this is the physical component where, in many cases, 
you can reduce it so it could go this way, it could go that way, or maybe there are several scenarios in between. But what actually decides? Well, partly it is, of course, decided by the free will choices of human beings, but the free will choices are not necessarily free, because people are trapped in certain emotional reactionary patterns, they are trapped in a certain mental way of thinking, they have a certain sense of identity, and so when you look at the question, will the, will the EU go into a downward slide or an upward slide, this is partially decided by what is happening in these geometric patterns in the three higher octaves. And so what the fallen beings always attempt to do is, of course, to set up a geometric pattern in the higher octaves that pull on people's emotions into a certain direction, pull their beliefs or their thoughts into a certain direction, and pull their sense of identity into a certain direction. So you can see when you observe this situation that not only for the last year but even for longer, the dark forces have been attempting to create a situation where people are becoming, first of all, dissatisfied with politics as usual, where since the 2008 financial crisis, they are fearing for the economic future. Since the Greek debt crisis, for example, they are fearing what if the money system collapses? What if the European Union collapses and cannot bail out these nations that could fail again, like Italy or whatever? And so this is the emotional component. There's also the anger that people have over the immigrants that have come in. There is the increase of a feeling that our nation is being overruled by the EU. Our nation may disappear. We are not able to determine what we want to do in our nation because the bureaucrats in Brussels are, are, in Brussels are deciding this. But there is also a mental component where they have been trying to get more and more people to believe in these ideas, such as the idea that nationalism is important, that each nation is important, that it is so important to preserve a particular nation that the EU should not infringe upon this and therefore we should not go closer into a cooperation. And it was of course very much these kind of beliefs that caused the people in England to vote to leave the EU. And so, along with the emotional reaction of course, but you also have an identity level component where over the last several years the dark forces have been trying to polarize people into identifying very much with their national identity in a very narrow uh, view of that national identity. And of course, the entire idea of a, a European Union and beyond that even a United States of Europe means that you have to overcome this identification with national identity, especially as it was, it was, see, as it was seen in past ages. Is it really that difficult to see that the identification with national identity and the belief in a superior of a superiority of a certain national identity was a major factor in the Second World War, the First World War, and many other conflicts? So it is clear if you look at it logically that as the planet moves higher, if Europe is to move higher with the rest of the planet, and move more and more into the golden age, then there has to be a shift in the national identity so that it goes away from this very old black and white view of national identity, the sense of superiority and inferiority, and all of the things that prevent true cooperation, like we talked about last year. And there has to be a softening of national identity where we do not see this as a confrontational thing. That we are not in conflict, we are not in competition with other nations. We don't have the distrust of other nations. We are actually able to see the humanity in people from other nations. And therefore we know that based on that humanity, we can find common ground, to use a cliché. And so, what you saw coming up here during the spring, was that there was a spilling over into the physical of these efforts of the dark forces. You could especially see it in the French election where the two candidates sort of represented one, the 
future moving into a more golden age matrix and another one that pulling back the, the uh, contraction into an old-fashioned obsolete national identity and even a threat to pull France out of the EU which would effectively cause the EU to collapse most likely or at least transition into a different form that was dramatically different. And so you saw these portents, and what became clear to us was that based on people's reactions, it was clear that we were reaching one of these tipping points in history where the situation in the physical could go into a downward spiral and could go into an upward spiral, or at least we could avoid the downward spiral. And because of the machinations engineered by the fallen beings, especially in the emotional realm, we saw that more and more people were put, being pulled into the downward spiral, and the only really way we could see to counteract this was to have you come together here in Europe, make the calls, serve to multiply the dictations that we can radiate into the collective consciousness so that we could shift Europe away from this tipping point and so that we could at least avoid going into the downward spiral but hopefully even create an upward spiral where there is now less emotional reaction, more willingness to think about what Saint Germain said, the possibility of a better future that many people dare not even think about today because they are so focused on the problems such as the economy or terrorism or this or that or the next thing and so they cannot even dare to envision what could happen as a better future and how the EU could transition into a better movement. You understand my beloved that <clears throat> There is a tipping point right now where more and more people are going into a black and white view of the EU, where they think that we can't get what we want in our nation out of the EU and therefore the only option is to leave. That was essentially what the British people said and what led to Brexit. We can't get what we want in the EU and our only option is to leave. Now, as we have attempted to tell you so many times with the teachings on duality and the black and white thinking and the epic mindset, this is of course a very limited view that is always manipulated by the fallen beings because unless you are manipulated by the duality consciousness, you cannot believe that there are only two options, black and white, this or that, in or out. There are always more options, but you cannot see them because you're not willing to look at them. So was there another option for the British people than to stay in the EU the way it was or to leave? Well, of course there was. They could have engaged in the EU in a different way, with a different attitude, with a different view. But that would have required them to change themselves. And so what you see is that we are at this tipping point where more and more people in the different EU European nations are thinking along the same lines. We can't see how we can get what we want as the EU is right now, so our only option is to leave, because they are not willing to look at themselves and say, well, how could we actually change our approach so that we could then change our engagement with the EU? And maybe if enough nations did that, we could then change the EU. And so, you can see how this is the kind of attitude that can suddenly lead an entire region into a downward spiral. And if it is allowed to accelerate and continue, in a matter of a few years it will be so that most people in Europe cannot see any other option than to dissolve the EU. And so what we decided was that if we could call a critical mass of people here for this conference, there was a high probability that we could dissolve those geometric patterns in the emotional, mental and identity realms engineered by the fallen beings so that we would take Europe a 
away from this tipping point, at least prevent it from going into a downward spiral. And, the, and our preconceived goal for the conference has been achieved by your calls, by our dictations, by you being here and reinforcing each other. Now, we did not tell you about this ahead of time because it really wasn't necessary for you to know this because your calls and these invocations were quite adequate to accomplishing the work along with our dictations. But you could potentially go back in our dictations with the knowledge you have now and you would see that we gave certain hints about this and we gave in fact many teachings that were aimed at shifting the attitude away from focusing on the problems and towards focusing on the possibilities. And so this really has been a very, very important work for the future of Europe. And it is not that you will ever get any credit in the history books, my beloved, <laughs> but you don't need that credit in the history books when you ascend. You just need to know that this was indeed something that helped your ascension because you have earned positive karma or whatever you want to call it. So the reality is this was the real goal we wanted to achieve with this conference and it has not only been achieved but exceeded so we are reasonably optimistic that we certainly can avoid the downward spiral but we can gradually turn the minds of a critical mass of people towards focusing on the possibilities and the possibility of reforming the EU, even accelerating the EU to a much higher level. And so it is clear that there are people in embodiment right now who have at least some glimpse of the vision that Saint Germain holds for Europe and for the EU. And as you make your calls and as people make the calls based on the invocations that will be created as a result of this conference and other dictations that have been given and will be given, it can accelerate this spiral. It can accelerate the positive spiral where more and more people begin to look for the opportunities that you have here in Europe. And the actually incredibly significant, the planetarily significant opportunity you have for taking a region that has been so plagued by war and conflict, transcending the past and demonstrating a new way to have true cooperation. Truly, my beloved, Europe has great potential. Europe has great promise. And it does not take all that much work by Ascended Master students to maintain a positive upward spiral. Naturally, if there were more Ascended Master students, we could accelerate that upward spiral. But what I'm trying to show you here is that there are many of these situations where we have this tipping point and where it suddenly doesn't take that many calls by that many people to give us the authority to shatter some of these geometric structures created by the fallen beings in the higher realms that are pulling people towards a negative portent, the negative spiral. And by simply shattering this, then all of a sudden, Events in the physical octave shift in a different direction and now start going up. And it is really amazing how much influence a relatively small number of people can have in these situations. Because the difference between up and down is very slight. And it does not take that much to shift even a region as large as Europe into going away from the negative spiral and into the positive. And so this is to give you a more realistic assessment of why this European conference is important. And of course, we have also explained why the conference in Korea was important. And we will explain why the conference in Russia is important. Again, this of course has to do with the fact that there are certain situations or conditions in Korea that are at a tipping point and can easily go either way and our conference helps shift them in a positive direction. There are certain 
portents in Russia that are at a tipping point and could go either way, as those of you who have followed the news in Russia are probably already aware that there is a new effort to expose corruption. And therefore you see that, again, a relatively small number of ascended master students can have a major impact on such a situation. All is, of course, subject to the free will, and I can tell you that Russia is a nation that will change slowly, unfortunately, for various factors that we will explain when we get there, or rather, when you all get there, those of you who are coming. And so, my desire really is to show you why it is so important that you give your invocations, why it is so important that you raise your consciousness, why it is so important that you speak out to change the collective consciousness. Because there are so many situations in history, my beloved, where the, the, diff the difference between the dial turning in a negative direction and turning in an upward direction is very small. Now, you may go back, for example, to the outbreak of the First World War, where you have the situation of the assassination of one person, which was the shot heard around the world that started World War I. Now, it's obvious to anybody who looks at history that it wasn't just that event that caused World War II. There was a complex political situation that had built up more and more tension and of course, that one shot was just a trigger event that released the tension and caused, so to speak, all hell to break loose. But what I'm saying is that the, differ the difference between this event actually taking place in the physical realm and not taking place was relatively small. And the number of people you are right here in this room, if you had been in embodiment back then and had our invocations, you could have, during the course of this conference, you could have shattered these matrices in a higher realm so that that trigger event wouldn't have taken place. This doesn't necessarily mean that you could have prevented World War I, because the larger tension, the larger situation was still there. But it does mean that at least that trigger event would not have taken place. And so it could have taken more time, and maybe things would have shifted, and maybe there wouldn't have been another trigger event. Maybe there would have been. But if there had been more Ascended Master students, then first of all, you could of course, under our direction, have avoided the buildup of tension in the years before. And therefore, you could have dissipated the tension to the point where a world war simply would not have been possible. And so, yes, a relatively small number of Ascended Master students could actually have prevented World War II. And if you had prevent, you could have prevented World War I. And if you had prevented World War I, you could also have prevented the situation of the humiliation of the German nation in the Treaty of Versailles that set the stage for World War II. You could even have made the calls and had the positive influence so that you could have avoided that the German population was pulled into this negative spiral by Adolf Hitler and the dark forces working through him. Now, we can of course always say but if those events had been prevented, would humankind have learned the lessons they needed to learn from those events? And that is an entirely different matter. And of course, it is not that I want you to regret what didn't happen in history. I just want to show you that a relatively small number of people can have a major impact on the future. Even today, there are certain events that your calls cannot prevent precisely because the people have not been willing to shift their consciousness and therefore they must see an outpicturing of that state of consciousness in an extreme form so that they are willing to then shift the consciousness. But of course, there are also many situations where 
your calls, your own raising of your consciousness can actually raise the collective so that the planet is raised beyond that level of consciousness and it doesn't have to be outpictured in physical events. And so there is always sort of a push and a pull. There are sometimes you can prevent major events, there are sometimes where you cannot, and then you simply need to, in your mind, make peace with the fact that they are happening, keep yourself as safe as possible, stay out of the downward spiral as much as possible, but otherwise make the best of the situation and reason that this was a necessary lesson that the people could not get in any other way from experiencing these physical consequences. And so, what I am in a sense giving you is the sense that in, in previous times many spiritual people have been very focused on negative prophecies, we might say. That there is a prophecy of a major earthquake, or a major war, or another calamity. And so people are praying, or they are meditating, or they are sending positive vibrations, or they are giving decrees to avert this negative portent. But what we are in a sense doing with this conference and the previous conferences and dictations on the Golden Age is encouraging you to shift into a slightly different mode. We will from time to time direct you to make calls to avoid some particular situation. But we want you to focus most of your attention on bringing forth the positive aspects of the Golden Age rather than, present, than preventing certain problems. Because some problems will need to manifest physically for people to learn, for them to shift their consciousness. But there are so few people on the planet who have the potential to hold the long-term vision for the manifestation of the Golden Age and focus on the possibilities and make the calls for the manifestation of the possibilities. And therefore we are asking you to consider shifting your attention on focusing on these positive long-term portents and not so much on the short-term negative events. Now, you, of course, there may be certain events we will want you to make calls on and then we will let you know. But still, you have to take the long view in a certain sense and realize that Given that you know what you know, given that you have the momentum of making calls that you have, you can't really allow your attention to be focused on what are essentially bumps in the road. You have to be focused on where is the road taking us. And then you have to focus on taking the planet onto the high road and not the low road. And this requires you to not be so engaged in what are essentially smaller issues that are not decisive in the long run. And so, these are my basic remarks for now, other than I again want to thank you for being here. I want to thank you for all of the work you have done on raising your consciousness, giving all of the invocations we have released. So many of you have given invocations now for so many years since I first started releasing them. So many people, Ascended Master students, have given decrees for decades and I can assure you that it has all had a decisively positive effect on the planet. And therefore you have my gratitude if you need it, but many of you are at a point where you don't really need it because when you give your invocations and decrees, you feel the flow of the Holy Spirit through you, and this is really all the reward that you need at a certain level of the path. And so, my beloved, I will end my remarks and give space to the one who holds space for Ernest.